blue here and I'm gonna get right to it today uh, it's hate week for Missouri uh, Missouri you're going down this week uh, this is gonna be a big game this weekend in the east it's gonna go a long way towards deciding who wins this one Georgia Missouri uh, is quickly becoming a pretty good rivalry here in the east the winner of this game the last two years has won the east uh, Georgia in 2012 and Ms. Ms. who in 2013 so I'm looking forward to this one. It's a big game for the dogs. We got to travel up to Columbia, Missouri, play them up there. Uh, but they have no home field advantage. Uh, this isn't a stadium that anyone's afraid to play in. It holds about 60, 70,000 people, which is nothing for an SEC stadium. There's high school stadiums in South Georgia uh, that hold more people than that. So as far as a home field advantage, there's not one. Of course, uh, you're always at a disadvantage just from traveling in general. So. Uh, there's that. Uh, Missouri, you're going to be in for a long day, and Uncle Lou's going to go ahead and tell you why right now. I just got done looking through some of the stats from your previous games this year, uh, and I'm not impressed. Uh, you guys have allowed a 100-yard rusher every game this year, with the exception of one, uh, that being Central Florida, which is a complete dumpster fire or just a wreck of a team they're terrible but every other team you guys have played you've given up uh, 100 yards uh, or excuse me you've had you, they've had a hundred yard rusher against you so one person on the team has rushed for a hundred yards against you uh, that does not bode well for you uh, when you're getting ready to play the dogs uh, as you're well aware we have two or three running backs on our team that could each individually rush for over 100 yards against you. It just decide, you know, just depends who we decide to give the ball to. But you guys cannot stop the run. It, it's kind of embarrassing, really. Uh, even Toledo, which is a throwing team, had a guy run for 150 yards on you. Uh, Mike Davis from Carolina runs for 150 yards on you. Um, don't even get me started on that that kid from Indiana uh, he's still gaining yards on you uh, because of course Indiana beat you which is just pathetic and a joke and an embarrassment to the entire SEC you guys really should still be ashamed of yourselves for that Indiana game that's great that you rebounded and went on the road and beat a crippled Carolina team but the bottom line is and these animals are going absolutely haywire out here for no apparent reason uh, hold on a second yeah sorry about that uh, but anyway, yeah, you, you guys, you just, you, you, every team that plays you has a 100-yard rusher, and the guy from Indiana is still running on you. You embarrassed yourselves. You embarrassed your fans. You embarrassed your university. And most importantly to me, you embarrassed the SEC when you lost to an Indiana team. I've said this before, but the Big Ten is the joke of college football. Everybody outside of the Big Ten laughs at the Big Ten. Uh, do you know who the Big Ten laughs at? Indiana. And you guys went ahead and lost to them, which is just... <laughs> I mean, I, there's no possible excuse you can make for losing to an Indiana team. And that guy ran all over you. Your first game of the year, you played a you played a, a, a Division II team or whatever it's called now, an FCS team. And they had a guy run for over 100 yards on you. So, you know, we're, we're, we're loading up the buses, uh, driving those to Atlanta, then getting on a plane to Columbia, Missouri. And we're bringing Todd Gurley with us. Too. Uh, so it's bad news for you. Todd Gurley is going to gas you guys. You're not going to have any answer for him, period. Uh, the fact that w we don't have a very good passing game is going to have little to no impact on this game at all because you guys are just sorry and pathetic at stopping the run. Uh, the two best players on your defense are your two defensive ends. Uh, and they're not even run-stopping defensive ends. They're pass-rush defensive ends. Well, guess what? We don't pass the ball uh, because we don't have to, and we don't need to, too. Uh, so, uh, with that being said, I think we do have those two receivers back this week, Malcolm Mitchell and Justin Scott Wesley. Malcolm Mitchell played a few plays last week, uh, but, but not too much. They're trying to uh, sort of let him wade back in. Justin Scott Wesley, I'm not sure why he didn't play. This has got me scratching my head here, but he's been practicing for four weeks, and he's completely healthy. I, I don't know who he pissed off, but he, he better be playing this week. Um, but Todd Gurley, Nick Chubb, going to run all over you. Uh, last year when you guys beat us, of course, Todd Gurley didn't play that game. He was out. Uh, but we did go ahead and let a running back play against you, a white one, 
two, and he ran for almost 100 yards on you, which is just pathetic and sad. We had another running back in that game, J.J. Green. He also almost had 100 yards rushing on you. Uh, he doesn't even play running back for us anymore. He plays defensive back. Uh, so basically, Magnum and Uncle Lou could rush for 100 yards on Missouri's defense. You guys are just pathetic and sad. You, you, you're not going to be able to stop Todd Gurley. It's going to be brutal. It's going to be ugly. Our offensive line is going to push you guys around and humiliate you too. Uh, that's right. There's nothing more demoralizing than knowing what's coming and still not being able to do anything about it. Well, Uncle Lou is telling you now what's coming. Uh, it's the number three train and it's arriving in Missouri at noon on Saturday.